Israeli military spokesperson Daniel Hagari said on Tuesday that the Israeli Air Force carried out a series of precise strikes on Hezbollah financial stronghold in Lebanon. One of our main targets last night was an underground vault with millions of dollars in cash and gold. The money was being used to finance Hezbollah's attacks on Israel. This vault was deliberately located under a residential building. Our strikes will degrade Hezbollah's ability to finance its attacks on Israelis, Hagari said. He also declassified the intelligence on a bunker under a hospital in Beirut. He said the bunker has not been struck. The military official accused Iran of sending cash and gold by planes to the Iranian embassy in Beirut before it then goes directly to Hezbollah. Israel carried out strikes on Beirut overnight into Tuesday hours after announcing its plans to carry out more strikes in Lebanon against a Hezbollah-run financial institution. At least 15 branches of al qaed al Hassan, which Israel says uses customers' deposits to finance attacks against Israel, were hit late Sunday in the southern neighborhoods of Beirut across southern Lebanon and in eastern Bekaa Valley, where Hezbollah has a strong presence. One strike flattened a nine-story building in Beirut with a branch inside it. The Israeli military issued evacuation warnings against the strikes, and there were no reports of casualties. The Associated Press journalists witnessed strikes late on Monday in the coastal region of Uzai near Beirut's airport, and Lebanon's health ministry said an airstrike near Beirut's largest public hospital killed four, including a child, and wounded 24. It was the first strike on the Lebanese capital in 10 days. Israeli ground forces invaded Lebanon earlier this month. The military said it aims to push Hezbollah out of southern Lebanon so that tens of thousands of Israelis can return to their homes nearby after more than a year of cross-border rocket and drone attacks. Israeli airstrikes have pounded large areas of Lebanon for weeks, forcing over a million people to flee their homes. Hezbollah has been launching rockets into Israel nearly every day since Hamas's deadly raid into Israel last year that sparked the war in Gaza. The Israeli military said Sunday it had struck more than 100 military targets in the last day belonging to Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. The army released footage said to show airstrikes on the Hezbollah targets in the area of al Matmura. Israel has meanwhile ramped up strikes on the southern neighborhood of Beirut known as the Dahia, a crowded residential area. Hezbollah has a strong presence there but it is also home to large numbers of civilians and people unaffiliated with the Lebanese militant group. A year of escalating tensions boiled over into all-out war last month. Israel sent ground troops into Lebanon at the start of October. Israel's war against Hezbollah, the Iran-backed militant group, stretches far inside Lebanon, and its airstrikes in recent weeks have killed more than 1,700 people, about a quarter of whom were women and children, according to local health authorities. Some of the more than 50 Israelis killed by Hezbollah over the past year were hit by anti-tank missiles. The Israeli military said Sunday that more than 170 rockets were launched from Lebanon at northern Israel. Russian losses in the Kursk region have increased. The 95th separate Polesi Airborne Assault Brigade of the Airborne Assault Troops of the Armed Forces of Ukraine continue to effectively take revenge on the Russian 155th separate Marine Brigade of the Pacific Fleet for the murder of Ukrainian prisoners of war. 
Ukrainian paratroopers near the village of Leonido in the Kursk region surrounded a platoon of the 155th Brigade and minus enemy armored vehicles, as well as dozens of opponents, writes Forbes. The Ukrainian airborne assault troops reported that soldiers from the 95th Brigade had recently destroyed approximately 30 Marines and three of their armored personnel carriers as a result of a multi-hour battle. The enemy's teleportation to hell was carried out in a complex manner. First, the first enemy armored personnel carrier was damaged by a strike drone, after which the enemy's equipment was disintegrated into atoms by a precise shot from a tank, the Policy Airborne Assault Brigade noted. The Ukrainian army added that the second enemy armored personnel carrier was in the sights of the Javelin anti-tank missile system operator, and the anti-tank paratrooper destroyed it with one shot. The third Marine APC was blown to smithereens after running over a mine that had been carefully prepared for its path by the sappers of the 95th. Recall members of the 155th Separate Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet have been accused more than once of killing Ukrainian prisoners of war. In particular, the media wrote that enemy Marines launched an attack near the village of Zeleniput in Kursk Oblast in early October and were able to capture Ukrainian drone operators and contractors. According to journalists, the enemy stripped Ukrainian soldiers to their underwear and killed them with shots to the head. Ukrainian paratroopers took revenge on the 155th Enemy Brigade. They actively eliminated the enemy in Kursk region. The Ukrainian side called for the issuance of warrants from the International Criminal Court for the arrest of Russian occupiers involved in the murders of Ukrainian soldiers.